I'm going to show you how you can make over $170 per day by using PancakeSwap on the Binance Smart Chain. Let's hop right in. Now, I haven't always been a fan of the Binance Smart Chain network, mainly because I feel like Binance is behind it. But over time, I have realized that it's become more and more decentralized. And at the same exact time, BNB has continued to grow. This year alone, it has gone all the way from a bottom of roughly $200 to sitting at over $600. That's a 3x return on an asset that has a $95 billion market cap. Additionally, the Binance Smart chain allows for opportunities over in foreign countries that normally would not be available like trading specific cryptocurrencies they have a lot of peg versions like for example if you want to be able to trade xrp you can do that on the binance smart chain network same exact thing with cardano without actually having to go over to those networks and there's a ton of other assets out there on the binance smart chain network that are not natively on that network it's just you're able to trade them because binance has the liquidity to be able to provide for those assets so i thought that was a really good use case and additionally they are doing cool stuff with OP, B and B and so on and so forth. So we're going to be taking a look at some pancake swap liquidity pools today. Now, one other thing I want to highlight very, very quickly is Binance Smart Chain in comparison to Ethereum, Solana Network, so on and so forth. They currently have 750 different protocols on it with over 1 million daily active addresses and a TVL $5.5 billion. That's a higher TVL than Solana has. And if we go ahead and we take a look at the prominent protocols over on BSC, you're going to notice that PancakeSwap is leading the race. It has $1.9 billion in TVL. And do keep in mind that PancakeSwap is a direct fork of Uniswap V2 and V3, basically. It's just, it's deployed in the Binance Smart Chain. And as I mentioned, PancakeSwap also supports OP BNB, which is pretty cool. OP BNB is optimistic Binance Chain. Now, I'm personally going to walk you through my process of going through finding those liquidity pools and actually building a portfolio so that way you guys don't just see the end result but rather how I actually got to that end result and my go-to resources are obviously going to be opening up pancakeswap.finance opening up the info page over on pancakeswap.finance I'm also going to go over to earn and open up the farm section these are going to be incentivized liquidity pools and then of course we are going to open up metrics finance the best liquidity pooling software out there now as I mentioned we want to look at the Binance smart chain so on the discover page on metrics finance I'm going to pull up pancakeswap as my exchange and look at the network BNB chain. Now keep in mind, PancakeSwap is on all these other networks that I mentioned, but at the same exact time, we are going to be taking a focus on the BNB chain, which is why we are only going to select the BNB chain. The main reason why is because that's where the majority of the TVL for PancakeSwap is, which means a lot of volume is going to be there, and we are going to get good and consistent returns over there. And we're also going to go ahead and set up our spreadsheet. So we don't really need to include platform right here, and we don't really need to include network right here, because I'm personally just going to be looking at PancakeSwap BNB chain. What I am going to include is pair fee tier as well as the range and of course the APR and allocation and then from there we're going to be able to extract the yearly yield which we can then turn into daily yield basically so these are the columns that we're going to put on our spreadsheet and we'll be able to start to populate this as we find different opportunities so over on metrics finance starting off here what I want to look for is stuff paired with BNB so I'm going to go ahead and throw on a filter right here under the must include section I'm going to include BNB so that way I'm looking at pairs that include BNB now obviously we could just jump right Right into cake bnb but me personally i do not like to provide liquidity for war tokens or decentralized exchange tokens that's because typically they do not have as much utility as some of the other tokens in the ecosystem now keep in mind that's just my personal analysis you do you I don't care what you do. But we got 68 pools here. I'm going to go ahead and refine some of this and look at TVL higher than $2.5 million, mainly because I want to look at some more blue chip stuff. Off the bat, you're going to see stuff like BTCB paired with BNB. That's an opportunity that we can take a look at. So I'm going to throw it on my favorites. We can also dive into this other BTCB to BNB or something like ETH to BNB. Now, in all honesty, you're going to notice that there's different opportunities. I am not going to bother selecting one over the other right now, but rather later on, I'm going to go through and I'm going to find the best opportunity. And that's just because there's a tool on metrics finance that we can use to find the best opportunity for a pair. So I'm just going to start to favorite stuff that I like. And of course, you're going to want to make sure that you have some assets in mind. I also see sold to BNB and Solana token has been doing very, very well recently. Same thing with BNB. So it'd be good to pair these two together. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that on my favorites as well. So I got three opportunities right here. The last thing that we could do is we can look for ones that have USDT in there or USDT. DC. I'm not going to say BUSD because they are discontinuing and phasing out BUSD. So let's go ahead and look at these four opportunities right here, and we'll be able to start to populate our spreadsheet after we do some deep dives into them. I'm going to start by pulling up sold to BNB because this is the one that I think is going to do the best, basically. And once I have this pulled up, it's time to start to find my range. And as you can see, I'm going to start with a 30-day high and a 30-day low as my range. But that's not going to work as an actual investment, and the reason why is because 
well we're almost out of range on the downside so just keep that in mind and if you guys want to invest over a longer horizon then what you can do is you could drag out that calculation range but i'm going to keep it at 30 days because that's typically my investment horizon sometimes i like to go a little bit tighter at 20 days so let's do that so we're using 20 days now i need to adjust my max price and off the bat, you can see I'm now getting about 64% APR, which is not too bad, but there still needs to be adjustments to this range because once again, we are still almost out of range. So my max price, since we hit that max price all the way over here, basically 10 days ago, I don't need to have it that high. So I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit, just cut out those peaks. That way I can get a little bit higher of a return. And I'm gonna do about 4.1 basically. That's about plus 18% from current price. Now remember, we're looking at base quote over here. So how many souls equal one BNB? When the price is going down, that means Sol is doing better than BNB. Whereas when the price over here is going up, that means that BNB is doing better than Sol. And then if you go ahead and adjust the min price, till we get to a ratio that we want to be at. So me personally, since Soul's doing better, I want to have a bit more Soul token in my pool, but I also want to be somewhat towards 50-50 considering that these assets are similar in terms of growth. So I think a range of about 2.7 to 4.1 would suit. That's going to be pretty reasonable. That's minus 22% plus basically 19%. And if we look at the volume history, this is relatively consistent. So when we look at the APR, 45%, that's not too bad. That's about what we're going to get in this pool. And if we're not happy with that, we can go a little bit tighter. So I'm going to do like 2.9 and I'm going to do about 3.9 over here. That keeps me about the same ratio, but it brings me from 45% to roughly 65% over here. $10,000 investment, making about $17 per day. So I'm going to go ahead and jot that stuff down over on my spreadsheet. So that was BNB to Seoul. That was on the 0.25% fee tier. And that was with the range of 2.9 to 3.9. Now remember, this is a tighter range. And this is something that I am going to have to actively manage. And I'll show you a tool that you can use to easily manage these pools in just a second, but we won't get there quite yet. It's a 65% APR. I'm probably going to allocate about $30,000 there, basically. My yearly yield off of 65% is going to be roughly $19,500. That's pretty good. And if we just go ahead and divide that by 365, that's about $53 per day. Now, something I want you guys to keep in mind, you do not have to allocate $30,000 here. You don't have to allocate the amount of capital that I'm going to allocate to this portfolio. You can completely tailor it to you. And I don't even recommend you just copy what I do here. Do not do that whatsoever. Always do your own research, look into your own pools. That's exactly why I'm showing you the process as opposed to just giving you a list of opportunities. So now that we've got that one written down, we're already at $53 per day and we want to get to about $170 per day. So let's go and pull up our other opportunities. We could just go ahead and unfavorite that because we have it on our spreadsheet. We're going to take a look over here at ETH BNB. Now in this scenario, we don't want to look at how many ETHs equal one BNB. We want to look at how many BNBs equal one ETH basically. Because in that scenario, scenario, we're going to see full numbers. It's going to be a lot easier to look at and a lot easier on the eyes for our analysis. Once again, going to go ahead and drag that calculation range to 20 days. You can see there's this huge jump over here. That basically means that ETH did very, very well compared to BNB. And what we're basically going to do is bring that max price to that 30 day high, which as you can see, we're almost out of range. And then once again, do the same thing for that min price right over here. And now we need to make adjustment, right? I'm going to bring that min price up to something like this, because even if there is a retracement, I don't think we're going to go all the way down to this price over here. So I can kind of cut out those prices. And if we do start to go down that far, well, guess what? I'm going to adjust my range as we are going down. So that way I could factor that in. And then my max price, I'm going to bring that up to something like this, basically, where we got about 55% BNB. So we got seven on the top and we got about 52 on the bottom, it's getting about a 34% APR. Couple things that we need to do is number one, look at volume history. And this volume is not consistent. The reason why is because, well, it was decent over here and then it was low over here and then it was super high the past couple days. So what we're doing is we're factoring in with our 20 day calculation range, all 20 days of this volume. So we probably wanna zone in to more recent data. We wanna look at where we had these huge spikes. So we're gonna bring that to about five days. The reason why is because we had two days where it was really high and we are seeing a little bit of a declining trend right there, but we're also factoring in three days where it's super low. So it's gonna average out to something that is reasonable, but we're probably gonna do better than that. So let's just drag that to five days and that's about a 55% APR. So once again, just going to jot that down over here on our spreadsheet. That's going to be ETH to BNB, and it's going to be on the 0.25% fee tier. So we'll just go ahead and write that down. And our range was 5.2 to 7. I'm going to allocate the same exact amount of capital here, $30,000. That's going to bring me an extra $45 per day. And when we do the math right there, that's $99 that we're at so far. So we still need to kind of double up on that in order to get to that $170 per day goal. Now, as I mentioned, there might be a better opportunity out there for that ETH BNB pool. So we're going to pull up the simulate page 
over on metrics finance pull up pair and then from here we're going to go over to pancake swap and we are going to look at the bnb chain basically and where it says select pair we are going to select eth and then we are also going to select bnb and then after we've done that we could check this little similar assets button but i already see a couple of positions off the bat so i'm not even going to bother checking that similar assets we're going to throw in the data that we just found so a calculation range of five days and our range was 5.2 to 7 so let's just go ahead and throw that in min price at 5.2 max price at seven and as you can see that 0.25 percent tier is not nearly as good as that 0.05 percent tier so even though we're charging lower fees on this tier we're still making more money because there's more volume in that tier and as you can see that's making us about a 60 percent apr and if we go ahead and look at the volume history let's just go ahead and put that back at 30 days you can see if anything that volume is picking up but one thing i notice is we are right to the left of this huge spike of liquidity. So if we are in that huge spike of liquidity, you can see we're doing about 20%. Even if we drag that down to five days, still doing about 20%. So we probably just wanna leave it at that position that we already found on that 0.25% tier, because that seems to be the one that is doing better. Now the next pool that we're gonna be looking at is Bitcoin B to BNB. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is a tool that you can actually use to manage your pancake swap positions talked about it in the channel before if you guys are new here drop a like subscribe notifications turned on so you don't miss out on content like this but it's called aperture finance now this is not a sponsorship i do not have any affiliation with aperture finance they are just a really damn good tool basically if we go over to pancake swap they just recently started supporting this we could go over to bnb chain it's going to show us all of our positions but if we need to rebalance a position we can just instantly hit rebalance type in our new range over here and hit rebalance now boom just like that it does everything on the back end they do charge a very very small fee in my opinion it's worth it it's about 37 cents but typically you would have to exit and then you would have to execute a trade and then you would have to enter into your position once again basically so that's three transactions three gas fees right there which is typically higher than what you would end up paying aperture to rebalance in just one transaction and it saves you time another benefit is it does make sure that you get all of your capital in the pool whereas if you just kind of try to deploy all your capital on your own it's gonna be kind of a pain because if you want to deploy ten thousand dollars you might only be able to get ninety five hundred dollars deployed because the ratio is always going to be changing it's going to be hard to match that i don't know i just think it's a really good tool you don't have to use it i don't care if you use it just wanted to put it out there but going back into that bitcoin b to bnb once again we're going to look at how many bnbs equal one bitcoin b and then from there we're going to adjust our max price and our min price remember we want to look on that 20 day range and then as you can see the price has been moving up recently that means that bitcoin has been doing better than bnb just keep that in mind but recently the past one to two days as opposed to the past week price has been moving down so bnb has started to gain some dominance again i'm going to go ahead and adjust this max price to something like 130 that's a little high just try 128 still a little high 125 that's what i'm going to end up with and then over here i'm going to adjust this to something like 100 so we're gonna do 100 125 that's the range that i'm personally using it's about 50 50 because this could go either way in my personal opinion and then as you can see volume has picked up so we want to drop that calculation range down to five days now we're already at peak of distribution so that's going to get us about a 20 percent apr once again we're going to go ahead and throw this over on pair we're going to look at bitcoin b i'm also in this scenario going to check similar assets so that way i'm not just looking at bitcoin b but i'm also looking at other derivatives of bitcoin in this scenario there are no other assets or similar assets so that's good and then our range was 100 to 125 so we're going to throw that in here as well basically and as you can see this one on the 0.25 percent tier is doing about 18 percent and that's basically the one that we've already pulled up whereas the other one is not doing nearly as good so yeah we're just gonna go ahead and throw this one on the list seems like all of ours are on the 0.25 percent tier today I would once again allocate about $30,000 of capital here, and I might end up not even entering into this Bitcoin B position because it's doing a lower return. And in my opinion, it doesn't seem too crazy unless I'm really bullish on Bitcoin as was well BNB. So I'm just going to put it in the red for now, as in I need to reevaluate this later on. I'm going to uncheck it from my favorite pools, pull up the BSC USD, which is USDT, and then WBNB, which is BNB basically. And then from here, I'll be able to find a range and do the same exact thing. We're looking at how many US dollars equal one BNB now, basically, because this is a usd paired pool so i'm going to pull that up on 20 days we're going to do 650 670 on the top 670 is a little high so we'll do 660 and then we'll bring that bottom up to something like this now remember this is taking a little bit of a bullish outlook if we're bringing that bottom up a lot to something like 560 and then if we are bringing this to something like 
660. We got about 57% stable coin. So this would be purely an income driven position. When we look at a five day calculation range, we're doing about 30% APR. It's not too good in my personal opinion. And we don't even have full market exposure. I just would not include this one in my portfolio. So I'm just going to uncheck that one. So here's the thing. Here's the dilemma. We have $90,000 allocated, but we are only at $115 per day in income. One thing I will say about metrics finance is sometimes it does cut out certain pools. Maybe there's not as many pools above $2.5 million. So we could delete that and start to look at more metrics finance pools if we want to like riskier stuff. But the other thing is we still have a minimum TVL required to show a pool on this page. And we do have kind of like a back end risk manager to kind of filter out some of the scammy options, which can occasionally filter out some of the super high yield stuff that is doing really, really good. We're working on adjusting that algorithm to be a little bit better. But we're going to head over to a tool called DeFi Llama. Once again, this is just like the best DeFi tool out there, but it's not as in depth on metrics. So we'll find positions on DeFi Llama and then we'll pull them up over on metrics. So in the project, I'm going to type pancake swap and you'll see two options so we'll see amm and amm v3 i'm just gonna check the v3 because this is the concentrated liquidity pool then where it says chain we are going to select bsc basically and as you can see we cannot find any pools so let's go ahead and just check the entire amm just to make sure it's not like factoring any of those out there we go there's a lot of opportunities here now I'm going to go ahead and sort by the 30 day average APY, just show the highest ones and the highest ones are shown about 24%. So nothing too crazy. I will say there is this pool that I have been coming across recently in my analysis, and that is V to WBNB. Now this pool has a significant amount of liquidity over on Uniswap on the Binance smart chain, but it only has $100,000 of liquidity over on PancakeSwap. So yields are naturally higher. But remember, as more and more capital comes in, that return gets diluted. Like right now, showing 600%, haven't even done any analysis. But if I change that $1,000, dollars to ten thousand dollars you'll see it's not consistent it goes from six hundred percent to now 564 and if i were to deploy a hundred thousand dollars it goes down to 350 that's because i'm doubling up the tvl basically so let's just say i were to do fifteen thousand dollars i'm going to go ahead and use a calculation range of 30 days here and i'm going to use a broader range and the reason why i'm going to use a broader range is because this is a naturally more volatile pool because it does not have as much tvl so i'm going to bring that max price up to something like 43,000 basically that's all the way up there and I'm going to bring that min price all the way down over here to something like 18,000 so that's going to get me 65% velo maybe that's a little aggressive so I want to bring that down to like 20,000 that'll get me about 63% velo and then if we want to we can bring that up to 44,000 gets us about 62%. So I'm happy with that. Allocates more to VLO, but remember, we're looking at how many VLO equal one BNB. So this period right here, BNB was doing better. This period over here, they were doing about the same. So do keep that in mind. We don't want to allocate too much to it. And then if we go ahead and drop that calculation range to five days, more recent data, you're going to notice we're doing about 209%. So I'm going to include this one in the portfolio, but here's what I'm going to do. As my APR, instead of 209%, I'm going to write 175%. Because keep in mind, this could go down over time and there could be consistency issues with it because the TVL is 100,000 bucks. Remember, 15,000 bucks in here, that's bringing an extra $72 per day, which when we add all that together, it's coming out to roughly $187 per day. We can knock off that Bitcoin BNB one so we don't have to allocate as much capital. That gets us to that $170 per day mark. I'm just going to go ahead and throw this information on here as well. This is on the 1% fee tier. Do keep in mind, I am not advocating you deploy into this one because this one is very, very, very risky, okay? Because it's a very low TVL pool, basically. Just keep that in mind. Now, I'm not personally deployed into any of these pools at the moment, but I am deployed into a couple other positions on PancakeSwap. And those ones are lower risk positions. They're not doing as high of return. But then I also also have one that is doing a very, very high return. That's the FET BNB one. And I really like that one. But again, that one is fluctuating a lot, which is why I did not include it on this list because the underlying principal assets do fluctuate a ton. And you just need to keep that in mind. The APR also fluctuates a ton. So yeah, this is about a $75,000 allocation. It's bringing in about $62,000 per year, assuming it keeps up to these APRs, which keep in mind, these APRs are always changing. And of course, assuming there are no TVL increases and keep in mind, principal assets can fluctuate. So you do have risk associated associated with this. This is not risk free whatsoever. The risk is you're taking on exposure to these underlying assets, but also these APRs can fluctuate because they depend completely on the volume in the market. If there's a lot of trading activity, that means that there's going to be a lot of fees generated. Whereas if there's no trading activity, no fees generated, just keep that in mind. But that's in total about an 83% APR, which is pretty conservative.
conservative considering you have a good portion of your capital allocated to stuff like BNB Soul, ETH BNB, which is more blue chip in my personal opinion. Now, one last thing I want to go and mention is I'm super excited to see what the future of Pancake Swap is going to hold. We're personally holding an exclusive AMA with Pancake Swap team on Thursday at 7 p.m. Central. But that AMA is exclusive to our accelerator clients. Typically, we bring on board 20 to 30 people in those AMAs to ask the people that are leading these projects exactly what they're building and exactly what strategies we should consider implementing and kind of run our ideas past them. And that's just one of the many benefits of the Builder Wealth DeFi Accelerator program. That's also application only. So you have to apply to get in. And if you guys do want to learn more about that accelerator program, I'm going to leave link down below a 15 minute presentation that I made. It will essentially break down exactly what I do to earn passive income in DeFi. It will kind of break down the overall concept that I just showed you here, basically. And then if you like what you see, you can book a call and my team will do two different things. Number one, see if you're a good fit for our program to make sure that we actually want you there and you're going to bring good vibes. But number two, to see if our program is a good fit for you. And then if it makes sense, we'll move forward. We'll help you build out a passive income portfolio through DeFi. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, drop a like, subscribe, notifications turned on. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.